Yes, of course, the government does. Uh, you know, this is something that we think is very important. Um, you know, we recognize that there is a very dire humanitarian situation in Gaza at this moment. Uh, we've been calling for a humanitarian corridor from the beginning. Uh, we recognize that aid trucks need to get through and they need to be able to deliver this assistance. And so this is why yesterday the Prime Minister, in alignment with the U.S. and the United Nations, did call for a humanitarian pause. And on that final issue, should that be conditional on hostages releasing, being released? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, getting the hostages out is one of our top priorities. So should a humanitarian and we, pause be conditional on Hamas? Well, that? I mean, we very much will continue to negotiate for the release of hostages. Um, however, we also recognize that there are a lot of people in Gaza right now who need humanitarian assistance. And so I don't think we need to make this one or the other. I think we need to ensure that we continue very strongly to uh, push for the release of the hostages. You know, there are Canadians there as well, but we also understand that we need to get humanitarian assistance to Gaza. Bon, euh, c'est une pause humanitaire, c'est quelque chose qui est important pour nous. Nous voyons qu'il y a euh, des, des milliers de personnes en Gaza innocentes qui ont besoin de l'assistance humanitaire. Alors, c'est quelque chose que le Canada, avec les États-Unis et l'ONU, euh, est en train de voir comment ce qu'on pourrait le faire. Euh, ce qui concerne les otages, euh, c'est notre priorité. Il y a des Canadiens qui sont peut-être dans cette... Euh, qui sont là aussi, et on va continuer de de travailler avec tous nos alliés pour justement sécuriser à que tous les otages soient retournés. C'est quoi la différence entre les deux? Quelle est votre réaction au secrétaire général qui dit qu'il y a des clairs violations de l'international humanitaire en train de se passer en ce moment? Quelle est votre réaction? Je ne vais pas commenter sur ça parce que je ne suis pas un expert en droit humanitaire. Ce que je peux dire, c'est ce que le Canada a été appelé pour depuis le début, qui est d'assurer un corridor humanitaire. Et ce que nous demandons, for now is looking at what possibility there might be for a humanitarian pause so that that aid can get through. Can you explain a little bit of the difference to Canadians who aren't very clear what the difference is between humanitarian pauses and a ceasefire? And, and I, I think the Global Affairs has actually made a very good effort to, to make that explanation. We are very concerned about the humanitarian uh, situation that exists in Gaza, and, and we believe and, and, and support the idea of a humanitarian pause, which is basically a pause of hostilities to allow humanitarian aid to get into the region to help those people who need the help so desperately. But you said yesterday that Hamas is a threat that must be eliminated. Do you still, uh, is your government's position that bombing should continue until there is no Hamas left? No, I, what I was saying is I was concerned about the terrorist threat that, that persists. And, and, and that terrorist threat has to be dealt with, but that's a very different situation than making sure that the people who are in a desperate situation, innocent civilians on both sides of that border, we have to make sure that the humanitarian aid is available to them and we do everything possible to protect Wait, them. You also, said, you also said yesterday that Hamas cannot be trusted to abide by any kind of ceasefire or international law. Why would they abide by a humanitarian truce? A humanitarian pause with what we're talking about? And, and it's basically a, a pause in, in hostilities to allow humanitarian aid to get to the people who desperately need it. What, what is your reaction to the UN Secretary General saying there are clear violations of international humanitarian law happening in Gaza? There, there are, I, I think, important bodies that have that responsibility to examine exactly what's taking place. Our expectation always, and from the very first day. Do you agree with the UN Secretary General? Does this government what, what, agree what with what that? What I, that, I agree with is that there is international law and humanitarian law that applies to any. Um, battlefield situation and that every country has an obligation uh, to, to, to abide by the rules, the international rules that exist. And, and there are appropriate bodies to determine if, if and when there are issues around that. But, 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 I, but I believe very strongly that that law should be abated. If, if Israel causes, but Hamas does not, how does that actually You're, you're asking me to speculate on something. And, and, and frankly, we believe that it's important to be able to get humanitarian aid to those people who desperately need it. And, and we, we support but that. Happens, but we, we support that there should be a, a pause. How that would actually be effective is to be determined, but we believe that it's important that that aid get to the people who desperately Thank need it. Thank you, everybody. Our job is, is to, to reassure them and to keep them safe, uh, but we're, as any responsible country, planning for eventualities, and it's something that, uh, that it really, in terms of a live situation that's evolving, 
is something that we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep our minds and hearts open to. C'est quoi la différence, Monsieur Miller, entre une pause, un cessez-feu et une trêve? Ouais, d'un, je, je, je pense qu'il ne faut pas entretenir l'hypocrisie en demandant euh, une trêve Yesterday, um, the UN Secretary General said that um, there were clear violations of international humanitarian law happening in Gaza, and I'd like to understand Canada's position on this. Do you agree with the Secretary General on that? So I uh, understand what the Secretary General observed, and I think what I just say is that uh, Canada has taken the position since the outset of this conflict about Israel having a right to defend itself, but always in accordance with international humanitarian law. I think there's been concerns about the loss of innocent lives on both sides of the border. Obviously on the Israeli side, that's what prompted this entire engagement by Hamas's terrorist act. In Israel's response, we understand the response was coming, uh, a response, a military response, but ensuring that international humanitarian law is observed is critical for any nation, particularly a democratic country. Israel ally. does contend that they are respecting international humanitarian law, that there are sufficient supplies still and that um, that the, that international law on armed conflict and humanitarian law allows them to conduct themselves the way they are is is that your view so I'll just observe what we've seen so far which is that you know we've had humanitarian aid going in which is good it started on the weekend that's a very positive step in the right direction but calling for humanitarian pauses is also really really critical to ensure the flow of that aid continues and is it contingent on um, uh, hostages getting out or civilians getting out or foreign nationals getting out the last question yeah I think the imp the important piece about the hostages is that hostages absolutely have to be returned what right? about the civilians and foreign nationals like Canada's support for this idea of humanitarian pauses, is that contingent or conditional on uh, not just aid getting in, but civilians getting out? I think the best people to ask about the nature of the humanitarian pauses would be the Prime Minister or Minister Jolie, but what I'd say to you is that... Neither is available to speak to us today. What I'd say to you is that in terms of sort of the return of hostages, that is critical. The flow of humanitarian aid is also critical. That's something that Ken has believed in for a long time. You've seen us dedicate $60 million in humanitarian aid. I think that puts us at or near the top of all of uh, the allies that are involved in this in, in this situation. But I don't hear you Thank saying you. civilians you getting out, sir. Thank and you. Canadians included. Conservatives. I know that you know you and a lot of other Liberals have had harsh words against Mr. Corleone specifically, uh, but clearly that message isn't necessarily resonating with Canadians who seem to support him more and more. So, are you concerned about that? And what do you guys have to do to reverse that trend possibly? Well, I think what uh, Mr. Polyev does is uh, try to amplify people's anger. Uh, he tries to reflect back to them um, their anxiety, and we are in a world right now that is incredibly challenging. Uh, and I think once uh, the dawn begins to break on, on the very difficult time that's happening across the globe, uh, there's going to be an opportunity for people to see who is pushing people down, who is pushing into their anxieties, who is trying to make them more worried and more scared, who is trying to take advantage of their anxiety, and who is actually trying to fix their problems and lift them up. I'm very confident about how we'll do in the future as the dawn breaks and people see what exactly he's been up to. When, what happens if that future doesn't happen for the next election? <laughs> well, first of all, I've been around since 2004, you see the ebbs and flows. I'm extremely confident of uh, where uh, the folks who are trying to fix problems and lift people up will be in history, and where the people who are pushing into people's pain and trying to make them feel worse and trying to get them more scared about their current condition are going to be. Is this is humanity, well I'll say this, well I think that look, humanity is going through uh, one of the most difficult times in its history. Every time we think that we can't... Uh, we, Every time we think that we can't um, deal with uh, something, something worse seems to happen on the planet right now. People are feeling really weak. This is not the first time humanity has gone through this. Uh, and in these moments when the world is going through things that are very difficult, um, there are people who try to reassure people, uh, try to find solutions and try to lift them up. Mr. Polyev has offered no solutions. The only thing he's offered is a, an amplification of people's anxiety, an opportunity to press into their fears, to make them more scared and more worried about the moment that they're in. I think that will not be, a, a, in the long run, a good strategy, uh, one that will reward him uh, uh, electorally. And when do you guys start considering that you might have to change your strategy if that Every day. doesn't change? Okay. Every day. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think that we're in a world where if somebody tells you that they know what's going to happen in six months from now, uh, they're lying to you. Next week. Uh, next week. Uh, we're in a state of constant change. So we have to be constantly changing. So, I mean, there's, a, there's an evaluation of what we need to do. 
um, to serve Canadians. I mean, I look at the area that I'm in within health. It's under uh, under constant change. There's huge opportunities for transformation. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to highlight what is positive, show people um, that there's tremendous things that are under the surface that are coming. And I know today is hard, um, but it's going to require patience. And, you know, yes, it's easy to reflect people's fear back at them. And it's a little like uh, uh, having sugar. It feels good for a second, but after a little while you realize that it's false and not really all that good for you, nutritionally bacon. Uh, and I think those are the policies of Mr. Pollock. Mark, Minister Blair yesterday said Hamas is a threat that must be eliminated. Does that mean that the position of the government is that bombing should continue until there are literally no Hamas members left? Well, I think that we, it's extremely important that the people who are responsible for uh, the terrorist uh, attack are brought to justice. Um, but I think it's equally important um, uh, that civilian life be protected. Uh, right now, we've asked for, uh, for a humanitarian pause, for an opportunity to bring in aid and to be able to remove people. I have constituents that are trapped in Gaza right now. Uh, we have a profound concern for innocent life. Uh, I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. I think bringing Hamas to justice and making sure uh, that they are held to account for their actions and that we can work to wipe them out as a terrorist organization and the protection of innocent life are not incompatible concepts. But once the pause is over, I mean it's bombs and not lack of food that's killing people in Gaza, right? So once the pause is over, does the government favor a resumption of bombing until Hamas is declared eliminated by Israel? Well, I'm, I, my personal position uh, is, uh, you know, and I, and I think that the minister has spoken clearly on this, um, is, is that we have to find uh, wherever possible uh, opportunities to peacefully resolve this while at the same time bringing the folks that are responsible to justice. Uh, and uh, it is an incredibly delicate situation. Uh, Minister Jolly was just in the region uh, and trying to talk through that path, find a way um, to make sure that, uh, that, that life is protected or, and, and that uh, those that are responsible for terrorism are brought to justice. Do you feel that your government and other governments has your government and other governments done enough to force Israel towards a two-state solution? Uh, I think that, uh, you know, right now we, we need to focus on a humanitarian loss. We need to focus on the immediate crisis that's in front of us. Uh, I don't disagree that we, we as, a, as a world need to reflect upon uh, how we get through not only this immediate moment, but how we get to, uh, to broader peace. Uh, we, can't, uh, we can't allow uh, the violence that we've seen over the last while to become uh, something that continues on this. Um, so I think in all of our hearts, every person everywhere in the world wants peace, and that has to be uh, at the heart of our work and our, uh, and our thinking in terms of solutions. But I have to go, I Ben, une trêve, c'est pour s'assurer que les, les civils, qui sont malheureusement toujours les victimes les plus importantes des conflits, puissent avoir l'aide dont ils ont besoin. On sait à quel point c'est difficile à Gaza. Manque d'eau, manque d'électricité, manque de carburant. Ce sont des, des choses, des biens essentiels dont les, besoins, dont les gens ont besoin pour survivre et passer à travers les preuves qu'ils vivent présentement. Okay. Donc, mais pourquoi est-ce que vous avez pas jusqu'à un cessez-le-feu? Qu'est-ce que c'est la différence? Parce que, en cause humanitaire, vous demandez qu'un cessez-le-feu, concrètement, qu'est-ce que ça change? Mais en même temps qu'une que, qu qu trêve permettrait de protéger les civils, le gouvernement, le peuple israélien a le droit de pouvoir se défendre des attaques de Hamas, qui est un groupe terroriste. Donc, c'est un, une, une, une obligation, d'ailleurs, du droit international qu'un peuple qui est attaqué puisse se défendre contre, contre des attaques comme celles qu'on a vues le 7 octobre. Donc, c'est une obligation qui, qui amène le gouvernement israélien à pouvoir euh, faire en sorte que le Hamas ne soit plus une menace pour le peuple israélien. Mais la trêve est là pour s'assurer que les civils en Palestine, dans la Banque de Gaza, puissent se protéger de ces, de ce, de ce, de ces oui, conséquences, de ces, de ces actions. Ça implique des négociations avec le Hamas, non? Parce que si on négocie des pauses humanitaires, on négocie avec le Hamas. Parce qu'hier, M. Blair a dit qu'on ne veut pas négocier avec le Hamas, c'est ça le problème. Donc, on travaille avec la société civile palestinienne dans la Banque de Gaza pour s'assurer que les organisations internationales qui sont encore là puissent avoir les, les, les biens dont ils ont besoin pour protéger les gens. M. Duclos, que pensez-vous sur les solutions pour votre parti, maintenant qu'on voit que vous êtes 16 points derrière les conservateurs, selon un nouveau sondage ce matin? Pour vous, comment est-ce que vous pouvez faire pour rattraper et combler ce gouffre-là? 
Bien, tout d'abord, il faut, un, reconnaître le fait que les Canadiens vivent une situation très difficile. Et quand ça va mal, bien, il, est, il est légitime que l'on blâme les gouvernements euh, qui sont là pour prendre soin des, des, des gens. Donc, c'est la première chose que je dirais. La deuxième chose, c'est que le gouvernement canadien, étant conscient de ses difficultés, doit faire encore davantage. On a fait beaucoup au cours des dernières années. L'allocation canadienne pour les enfants, par exemple, diminue dans ma circonscription à chaque mois de 40 les familles en situation de pauvreté. Les aînés, même chose, le taux de pauvreté des aînés était réduit de presque 25 Le logement, on investit beaucoup par la stratégie nationale du logement, mais il faut en faire encore davantage parce qu'avec l'inflation, les, les problèmes qu'on voit sur la planète, les, les, la crise climatique qui, qui crée toutes sortes de dommages. Plus que les gens ont besoin d'en demander encore davantage. Ça fait quand même un certain temps que vous dites qu'il faut en faire plus. Vous, je dis le gouvernement, là, pas vous, précisément. Et pourtant, les chiffres ne font que continuer dans la même direction, une chute des libéraux. Est-ce que ça vous inquiète? Bien, ça nous dit qu'il faut faire un bon travail. Nous, on pense que l'alternative au gouvernement libéral, celle de M. Pierre Poilievre, qui est de couper, de faire mal à nos familles, de faire mal à nos communautés, c'est une alternative qui serait très mauvaise pour les Canadiens. Mais il va y avoir un moment où les Canadiens vont devoir se, se prononcer sur cette alternative. Et nous, on pense que l'option d'investir dans les gens, les familles, c'est un bon Bien, ce qui est important, c'est qu'on puisse apporter l'aide nécessaire pour les civils présentement qui sont coincés en Palestine puis euh, qui vivent dans des conditions qui sont très difficiles. Donc, c'est important que cette aide humanitaire-là puisse parvenir. Je pense qu'on a été clair sur la question de la pause pour nous. Like what, what does that look like? And Canada is calling for uh, humanitarian pauses, and this is something that uh, uh, several other countries have caused, uh, called for. And uh, how that will actually work, I can't tell you. What I know is that a ceasefire would make Israel vulnerable, and so a pause will allow them uh, uh, to, uh, to maintain readiness, but also ensure that aid will be delivered. And that's our goal. We, we put in $60 million uh, towards uh, humanitarian aid, Now we need to get that aid into Gaza, the, and we have to find a way to do What's the difference what between a, a, a truce, a ceasefire, a confidence? What confidence do you have that Hamas would respect the humanitarian cause? Uh, I have no confidence that, you, uh, that uh, Hamas will respect anything. What we need to do is negotiate and find a way to help make what, this happen. What's the difference between a truce, a pause, and a ceasefire? Um, I'm not a technical expert on this, but what I would understand is that uh, when we have a war, we have guns being fired. When we have a ceasefire, we have guns laid down. When we have a humanitarian pause, we have guns poised but not fired. That would be the way I understand. In Gaza, which uh, everyone's concerned about, is a very good approach. Thank you. Well, the idea, I certainly uh, do, because I think we should be very much concerned about uh, civilians, uh, both in Israel and in the But do you territory. think a, a humanitarian truce is, is right now a better call than a ceasefire? Well, we have to make sure that the international community is supportive, absolutely. Do you believe that Hamas should be eliminated? Do you believe that the government should stake that position? Well, I don't, I don't think there's a single person who, uh, who can say anything nice about Hamas, but uh, that very definition of eliminating, I, I'm not quite sure that can be, how that can be accomplished. And that's what um, I think the international community should focus on. And on a humanitarian pause, can you just... ...transfer people at home between humanitarian pauses and a ceasefire? So the, what is the difference from what I've heard from my constituents? from what you heard from your party, because you, your party is not asking, you, you know, Mr. Trudeau is not asking for a ceasefire, he's saying we want humanitarian pauses. What does that mean concretely? What's the difference? The government has been very clear all along that we support Israel's right to defend itself, yeah, but, but, but the government has been very clear that civilian life must be protected in Gaza. There's different approaches about whether or not it's a temporary ceasefire, whether or not there's a long-term ceasefire. The government has not got into that question. The key message that the government is supporting is that we need to make sure that civilian life in Gaza is protected. I'm proud of the fact that the government is focused on that, that we're working with partners around the world. Uh, people, can get, people can get caught can in, get including journalists. A, how can it get protected without a ceasefire? Well, at the end of the day, the actual military operation that Israel is providing in Gaza is actually very targeted towards Hamas. I can appreciate that it's a small area, it's difficult. I mean, look, Laurence, I'm not going to get... Look, at the end of the day, I support where the government position is. This is a very nuanced issue, one of the most complex geopolitical issues in the world. 
And at the end of the day, the government is walking the line between making sure that Israel has its right to defend itself at the worst attack since the Holocaust, but at the same time trying to make sure that the response from Israel is proportionate to Hamas, a terrorist-based organization, not on civilian life. It's a difficult question to answer. I have to get to caucus. Thank you. Je pense qu'il faut faire des pauses, des trêves, tout ça, c'est tous des synonymes. Je pense que pour, euh, pour le bien de, de tous ces, toutes ces personnes, c'est des êtres humains dont on parle ici, il faut absolument que ça arrive. Puis moi, je pense que tout ça, il faut vraiment que ça se fasse au regard du droit international. Je pense qu'on parle d'être humain ici, qu'on parle de pause, qu'on parle de trêve, qu'on parle... C'est des synonymes. Je pense que pour le bien des êtres humains, peu importe où ils sont, Mais pourquoi le faire. premier ministre fait-il cette distinction dans sa vie alors? Si on arrête toute la violence, une pause, ça veut dire qu'on arrête le temps de donner de l'aide pour l'Afrique mondiale. Répétez-moi ça. Si on fait un cessez ça veut dire que tout le monde arrête de faire. Si on fait une pause pour une trêve humanitaire, ça veut dire que tout le monde arrête une place de l'Afrique Pour une petite période de temps, de quoi qu'on envoie l'aide? Est-ce que ça... Je ne suis pas dans la stratégie internationale. Non, c'est un début de quelque chose qui pourrait, être de, qui pourrait devenir suffisant. Je pense que dans, le, dans le, la tension internationale qu'on a tout de suite, il faut commencer par quelque chose qui va mener à ça. Donc, c'est peut-être... Moi, personnellement, je suis pour aucune guerre nulle part, puis c'est le feu permanent partout. Mais de toute façon, il faut que l'on respecte le droit international, peu importe où on se trouve, peu importe où il y a des conflits sur la planète, puis pas moins... Euh, comme c'est le cas au Moyen-Orient tout de suite. Le droit... Hey, je vous je suis en retard, vous savez, là. Non, non, vous êtes tous en retard. Est-ce que les forces, cette façon de rallier tout le caucus derrière cette idée-là? Non, il n'y a aucune stratégie de caucus là-dedans. Non, pas du tout. Non, je pense... Non, je sais... Ben, je ne sais pas si le caucus est divisé, c'est parce qu'on parle, de, on parle de, de, toujours de la même chose, mais de différents angles. Donc, que ce soit une pause, que ce soit cessez le feu, je pense qu'une pause, c'est un début d'aller vers le cessez le feu, n'est-ce pas? Si on parle d'une pause. Donc, euh, j'espère, j'ose croire et je souhaite euh, hardiment qu'on va finir par avoir un cessez, -le un cessez le feu et que les pays occidentaux dont nous sommes arriveront à, euh, à trouver une solution entre, entre, entre eux pour pouvoir faire cesser ce calvaire que vit le Moyen-Orient depuis trop d'années. Oui. We need experts in that field, lawyers in that field, that should tell us if it's what's respected, if there's uh, some, some rules that are not respected. I don't have a clue. Right now, I'm not an expert in that field. But we are a state of law here, and international law is law. So any parties should respect international law. And all the Western countries should be severe about that, to condemning whoever, party, whoever even on this planet. This conflict is not is important because it's sexual right now, but there's many conflicts anyway. International law should be respected by everyone, and Western countries should make sure it's the case. Thank you. Moi, je suis au Nouveau-Brunswick, j'aime bien ma province. Mais est-ce que vous pouvez essayer les Québécois débattre de ça? Moi, mais pensez-vous que c'est le Québec, les pires, là, vous avez vécu le gouvernement hier, en Alberta, en Ontario, là. Vous avez trouvé-vous qu'il allait un peu loin, un fort café, je crois. Je pense que... Il euh, faudrait que je relise l'article. Mais disons que je suis au Nouveau-Brunswick, moi. Ouais. Ouais. Je suis bien content de ma pro... Je suis bien content de... De, de la façon que le Nouveau-Brunswick a évolué dans les droits linguistiques, mais mmh. c'est jamais suffisant. Mmh. Et je, 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 on a fait des, des gains, beaucoup de gains ouais. juridiques, mais maintenant, il faut porter le juridique aux pratiques sur le terrain. C'est là que ça, et et là qu y a des, des, ça accroche souvent dans les provinces comme le Nouveau-Brunswick. Pour ce qui est des commentaires de M. Graham, je sais, vraiment, je ne les ai pas lus, je ne peux pas ouais. les commenter. Mais dire que le Québec est l'un des pires acteurs au Canada, c'est ce que vous me dites. Là. Ouais, je me fie à ce que vous me dites. S'il ouais. a dit ça, je ne suis pas tout à fait d'accord avec lui. Vraiment. Merci. Euh, I think all of the uh, Western nations, Canada, the United States, and the UK have used the same language. We're not calling for a ceasefire. We understand that Israel has to be able to defend itself under international law and has to be able to take out a terrorist group, Hamas, that's at its borders. But certainly we want humanitarian aid to get in. And uh, pause simply means you put your weapons you know, in, on pause for a little bit. Well, well, that happens, and I think that's a reasonable step. Uh, on, on the Senate, sir, do you have any words on the Senate, sir? Let me make it clear. When you see something impossible, like the ceasefire, you have to take some possible step in order to make the impossible possible. 
So I strongly support the humanitarian policy, bringing food, water, medicine to the citizen. Bring the temperature down. Probably with this, with the future, we will reach a ceasefire. And after that, the mission of the entire nations and to bring both sides to a negotiation table for a lasting peace and security. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you give us an update on what's going on in the negotiations for the St. Lawrence Seaway? We expect the parties to uh, get back to the table by Friday. Um, I'm going to talk to my mediation team as to where I should be then. Uh, I follow their recommendation. We'll show both these things. They got a 96% track record, even with the BC port strike. So, you know, Friday where I can enough? be helpful. Is Friday soon enough? Uh, that's when the party said that they wanted to do it, so, you know, it is in their hands. You know, I mediate and conciliate, I'm responsible for that. They have to come to the agreement. So if nothing happens on Friday, is this the time you start looking at the Canada Labour Code, start pulling into that policy toolkit? Not going like, to go there yet, because even mentioning that kind of taints what the table will be. I go into it eyes wide open, but optimistic. Yeah, but it's that there's no threat to Canada's reputation as a partner here. Are you concerned about Canada's reputation as a training partner? Well, we just keep talking to our American counterparts. They are obviously very concerned and have a lot at stake here, as do a lot of members of this caucus around the Great, around Great Lakes communities and with a particular interest in grain. So getting it from all sides, and I apply that pressure to the parties. You're online talking about the uh, Conservatives and their bill, or the bill that's being voted on today on vaccine mandates. What do you think about the fact that we're still discussing this uh, in the post-pandemic period. Oh man, we just got so many other things to be discussing right now, but you know, I, I can't tell them what to do. It just, I, I just find it just, it's a reflection of their priorities, so I'll let that speak for itself. We got a lot, a lot of other things we need to be talking about right now. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, oui. Ben, je vous dirais, le, le ministre Reagan est évidemment très, très saisi de ce dossier-là. C'est un dossier important non seulement pour les armateurs, mais je pense pour l'ensemble des Québécois et Québécoises, même le pays est entier, parce qu'on parle de... Ben, écoutez, je peux vous... moi, j'ai parlé avec le ministre Reagan hier. Le ministre Reagan parle avec les partis parce que c'est un enjeu important, je l'ai dit. Avec tout ce qu'on vit présentement, l'inflation, beaucoup d'incertitudes, la dernière chose qu'on a besoin, c'est une perturbation des chaînes d'approvisionnement. Donc, euh, évidemment, c'est quelque chose qu'on suit très, très près. Puis on veut que les partis retournent à la table des négociations pour arriver à un accord. Écoutez, toutes les, les solutions sont envisagées. Comme je vous dis, le ministre Reagan est, est très saisi de cette question-là parce qu'il va de l'importance nationale. C'est un enjeu économique pour l'ensemble du pays. Et euh, je peux vous dire que c'est tous les acteurs de la chaîne d'approvisionnement sont euh, concernés, interpellés dans ce dossier-là. Je peux vous dire, j'ai parlé à plusieurs et les gens expriment cette préoccupation-là. On a déjà vécu ça dans, dans le port de Vancouver. Évidemment, on ne veut pas que cette situation-là se répète. Et vraiment, j'en appelle à, 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 à l'ensemble des partis de s'asseoir parce que, comme je vous dis, euh, les enjeux, on a réussi après la pandémie à rétablir les chaînes d'approvisionnement. Il va aussi de la confiance de nos clients à travers le monde. Donc, la question de logistique est fort importante. Est-ce que, est que, est que ça doit être réglé avant votre relâche parlementaire? Écoutez, euh, ah, il faut que ça soit réglé le plus rapidement possible. C'est pour ça qu'on en appelle aux partis de s'asseoir puis de trouver une, 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 une solution de négociée. Une spéciale Écoutez, pour un retour au travail. Le ministre Reagan, comme je vous dis, est saisi de cette question-là. C'est une question importante. Et vraiment, j'en appelle à tous ceux qui sont à la table de négociation. Assoyez-vous, parce que vraiment, c'est non seulement dans l'intérêt des deux parties, mais c'est aussi dans l'intérêt euh, des différents acteurs à l'échelle du pays. C'est pas d'échéance, une ligne. Le ministre Reagan pourrait vous, vous répondre là-dessus. Well, I, I would say uh, everyone in the country feels the level of urgency. Like I said, when we came out of COVID, uh, the uh, resiliency of our supply chain was paramount. You know, we have inflation. We need to make sure that uh, we're not creating a situation that would be detrimental. Uh, to different actors in, in the supply chain. You know, there's a lot of issues around trust that our international partners are putting in terms of the logistics uh, that we offer in Canada. But I, I know the party understand that. I trust them to come to a negotiated agreement. That's what we want, and I hope that there will be a uh, meeting and continuing uh, to find solutions. I could not understand. Minister Blair says Hamas should be eliminated. Do you agree? I'll leave that to uh, Minister Blair if that is his comment. Merci. There was a British MP who was traveling to Canada yes, uh, with the Parliamentary Committee last week. He had the first name Mohammed. He was stopped 
twice by, for additional security screening and said he was humiliated by it. What's your reaction? Well, uh, we, we, when we heard that, we, we called Eric Canada. Uh, Eric Canada apologized, and apologizing was the right thing to do. Vous avez beaucoup travaillé la ministre actuelle, mais c'est définitivement une priorité du gouvernement parce qu'il y a trop de choses inacceptables. Oui. Les amateurs demandent une intervention de la ministre. Oui. 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 L'importance de la voie maritime, euh, on est en contact avec les deux côtés. Ce qu'il faut, c'est tourner à la table et ce qu'ils vont faire. Euh, parce que la solution, ça se négocie autour d'une table. Oui, mais ça se négocie autour d'une table. Ça, 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 ça se négocie autour d'une table. Oui, Qu'est-ce que c'est là qu'on allait voir? la différence entre des pauses humanitaires et une très bonne Votre gouvernement fait la distinction entre ça. C'est-à-dire, vous voulez dire entre ça? Une pause. India has said that it will renew uh, issuing of four kinds of visas. Do you feel that that chapter is now closed? Are, are you satisfied with what they said about that? Well, it's good to see that they uh, they have resumed that. Uh, it would have been nice that they didn't take it in, in, in the first place. And as I want to remind uh, Canadians and everybody um, that there was a Canadian that's killed on Canadian soil, and we've been asking for uh, greater cooperation uh, with the investigation. When you, how do you interpret the signal? of this slight easing of tensions from India? Are they trying to send... You know, we have very strong people-to-people -people ties, right? And uh, to making sure that uh, uh, both Canadians and Indians can have the ability to be able to go back and forth, when, especially when it comes to uh, you know, celebratory events like uh, weddings and sadly when it comes to funerals. Those are very, two very important uh, events that we want to make sure that people can uh, uh, go back in uh, for us. So it's, it, it is good news for Canadians as well. When so, are there going to be arrests in that case? As you know, uh, when it comes to the police, it's, they decide independently. You have no uh, information as to how much longer former, they need? As a former police officer, I can assure you that this type of, uh, when it comes to police investigation, they are completely independent. On this one, there's no make, way the government has no clue what I can, I can assure you, the their investigation. investigation is completely independent. But that you're going to have to react to it politically if there are arrests. Are you concerned that this could all start up again if there I mean, are? Again, it's, I mean, again, the police will make their decision when whatever information uh, does come out at that time. Of course, we'll, we'll make the appropriate uh, judgment calls at that time. So it could time. go on for years then? It all depends on the, um, um, the police investigation. Can't I can't say. Within I have months, no, within weeks. I can assure you, I have no idea to just be able to say whether it's going to be months, weeks, or, or years. Schaubach? But one thing I can say, I do have confidence uh, uh, in their ability to be uh, good and thorough. Investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Ils sont pas capables de rejoindre au téléphone. Ils sont pas capables d'avoir des remboursements. Il y a encore des problèmes. Qu'est-ce que vous dites à ces fonctionnaires? Premièrement, le temps d'attente au centre d'appel euh, sont inacceptables. J'ai parlé avec le leadership de Canada Vie. J'ai dit ça et il travaille fort sur cette question, mais Je sais que 99% de fonctionnaires déjà ont enregistré avec Canada B, mais bien sûr, le temps de temps au centre d'appel sont inacceptables. Tout le monde doit accéder à leur, euh, leur avantage. C'est pas le cas. Nous travaillons fort sur la question sur les enjeux. Nous avons appris les leçons de Phoenix, bien sûr. J'étais la ministre d'approvisionnement, je sais les problèmes-là. J'ai parlé avec mes, mes collègues, surtout le ministre Duflo, et nous savons qu'il y a le travail à faire, mais le leadership de Canada B va continuer de s'assurer que tout le monde peut accéder les avantages nécessaires. Quels sont vos moyens pour forcer Canada Vie à améliorer leur service? Est-ce que vous pouvez les punir? Uh, j'ai parlé, comme j'ai dit, depuis uh, être nom, nom, nommé comme ministre, 
du Conseil du Trésor. Euh, J'ai parlé avec euh, le leadership de Canada B. J'ai dit que c'est inacceptable d'avoir ces temps de temps au centre des balles. Ils savent, ils savent qu'il y a un problème. Ils travaillent sur le problème et je vais continuer de surveiller le progrès et sinon nous allons avoir d'autres euh, conversations et mesures. Merci à vous. Look, I mean, I think the opposition is out of touch on this. I mean, Canadians overwhelmingly supported uh, COVID vaccines. I think it's also concerning because when Mr. Polyev first put this forward, it was about eliminating all vaccine mandates. You know, I, I can't send my son to daycare if he's not fully immunized. And that's something that's about the public health of all Canadians. Um, I, you know, I, I think most Canadians recognize how difficult a time that was and how, you know, important and safe vaccines were. Um, so, you know, this is, I think, you know, just riling up people at a time when, you know, we need to be focused on, on other things. Moi, je crois que c'est très concernant. On sait que les vaccins sont sécures, on sait qu'ils sauvent les vies, on sait que uh, ils ont des impacts importants. Uh, c'est un moment que je crois que c'est hors uh, de ce que les Canadiens se préoccupent à ce moment. Uh, le fait qu'il le, le revient, uh, je crois qu'ils veulent faire uh, certaines personnes se sentent divisées, mais nous sommes dans une autre époque et, et je veux confirmer que la position du gouvernement, c'est que les vaccins sont sauvés, ils sont importants, ils sauvent les vies. Moi, comme mère, je ne peux pas envoyer mon petit enf mon enfant à soit la garderie, soit l'école sans qu'il ait immunisé. Et c'est important parce qu'il y a des, des euh, diseases, des, des, des maladies qui sont très contagieuses, qui qui sont dangereux et les vaccins ont sauvé des vies pour des dizaines d'années et c'est quelque chose qui est important. Support Israel in its call for uh, Antonio Guterres to step down. Uh, look, what Canada supports right now is very much um, looking for a humanitarian corridor, looking for humanitarian pause to get aid into Gaza. We've been firm and we support Israel's right to defend itself with an international humanitarian law, and that's our position. Is Thank it, you. Are you happy to have uh, Mr. Polyev uh, coming to Windsor, come to have a sorry. rally in Windsor? Are I'm not too concerned about it, no. Uh, look, I would expect any uh, leader of any official opposition to get around the country. There's a big difference in my writing in particular, because uh, I've had many conversations over the four years. There's a strong history of progressive conservatism, uh, but when I talk to most conservative-minded individuals, they are concerned about his trajectory in terms of what he represents, because it's a different type of conservatism than what we've generally seen in the country. Uh, and people don't forget that it, when the merger happened with the progressive conservatives and uh, what is now the CPC, that that party is dead. Is it mostly, mostly in Hans, like the more the more rural where you come from, or is no, it mostly no, in Kings, the uh, the Valley? No, I would say I would say Atlanta, Canada, writ large. I mean, look right now, you have Premier Houston who ran a campaign in 2021 saying that he was not the same as the federal Conservatives. Uh, because he knows the body politic in Nova Scotia is different than the type of style that Pierre Polyev is offering. Uh, we have an obligation to remind Canadians about uh, what he stands for and how he has uh, acted up here in Ottawa and certainly across the country. The misogynistic tags on his videos, uh, his American style politicism, uh, the way even in Kelowna, the way he acted in, in terms of how he engaged with journalists. So there's a lot there. Not to say that I disagree. There's some areas certainly on trying to drive regulatory reform, big projects, fine. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, when I talk to my constituents, uh, they want to see a principled advocate in Ottawa. I'm making sure I try to do that every day. And at the same time, their style of conservatism that exists in Atlanta, Canada is different than what the Federal Conservative Party has become over time. Thank you.